and welcome along to the Wixie Boy Kitchen. It's been too long, I know. Six months or so it's been. Late summer, I think was the last time I did one. But here we are. What does this calendar say? It says December, which must mean it's Christmas special time. Woohoo! So, I mean, we're not going to break any boundaries for these recipes. I'm going to do three episodes. Um, we've got three things in mind. Um, like I say, I mean, I'm not going to take these on MasterChef or anything. But they're good home cooking, simple things. Um, one of them being my gammon, which loads of people ask me about all the time. Real hit every Christmas. Been doing that for about 10 years, probably longer than that. Um, and this, this exact method. Um, I'm going to do, I've got a great leftovers dish, which is my flatbreads, which I've been meaning to do a video on. Um, real versatile little flatbreads that you can have with anything, but I'm going to use them for leftover special. And today we're going to do my sausage roll. I first made this last year actually, um, but it was, yeah, beautiful. Absolutely loved it. Just chucked a load of stuff in and away we went. But today I'm going to be a bit more structured with it. We're going to make, also make a cranberry sauce. Um, love to make a cranberry sauce each year. Well, not just at Christmas, anytime really, but yeah. Cranberries are a bit easier to get around Christmas, of course. I'd definitely suggest getting fresh ones. Frozen ones are okay, but yeah, fresh ones are better. You can get them most places now. Before we do any of that, though, I'd like to just say a few things. Uh, you may notice my Christmas jumper. Um, this is from, you can get these from Burton's. A uh, five pound of these goes to the prostate cancer charity, uh, close to my heart. A few members of my family have had it, awful thing. Um, nice, nice, nice jumper as well. It's a really good cause. I'd urge you guys to go out there and get one. 20 pounds, I think they are. Like I say, five pound goes to that charity. Um, and also while we're on charity, I just wanna say a quick word about the Cheers for Chester uh, thing. They got an event coming up soon, a raffle, I believe. Um, so yeah, if you go onto their website and please, please donate to those guys because they they had some bad news that they couldn't, that Chester couldn't have his operation in the UK. Um, he was refused for whatever reason. Um, so now they've got to go to America, which actually could be a blessing, I think, because we're told that they've got the best surgeons and the best the specialists in this field. So obviously they need to raise more money. Done exceptionally well this year, really hard times. Um, but yeah, they need to get to that hundred grand. So I mean, anything will help. So I'll put some links down the bottom and I'll probably put a little cheers for Chester Bug as a tribute for this episode. Right, so we're gonna crack on with this. Just gonna get this calendar out of the way, put it in back up. Right, so first up, we're gonna make the pastry for these sausage rolls. So, get ourselves a bowl. There's one. <laughs> so, Easy thing to remember with the ratios of pastry, half fat to flour. So for like for short crust pastries, which I'm gonna make. So if you were doing a sweet pastry, you would just do half butter to, to, to the ratio of flour. So for instance, 100 grams and then 50 grams of butter. Um, I'm actually gonna use lard. I think lard's quite good for short crust pastry for savory. Um, and it, it tends to bind a bit better as well. So I'm gonna use half lard and half Butter. So what you need to do is get, I'm going to use two, I'm going to do a 200 gram. That seems to be the right amount, I think, for this amount of pastry. Um, so you need to get 200 grams of plain, plain flour, 25 grams of butter, 25 grams of lard, or just 50 grams of butter. Cold butter, cut it up into slices, uh, sorry, into little cubes. And then we're going to work it into the, into the flour. Um, it takes a while, actually. It's quite a, it's quite therapeutic, but yeah, it can get a bit. I mean, if you don't want to make pastry, just use a bought one. And puff pastry works just as well, really. Um, but I do like to, yeah, I do like to make a pastry every now and again. And I thought, why not make it today? It's cheating otherwise, isn't it? Right, let's crack on with this then. So once it's all mixed together, um, you should have sort of crumbly texture. Um, you then need to add, I've just a little bit of salt has gone in as well. You just need to add a little bit of water just to bind this together. Not 
too much. That might be a bit too much. That'd be okay. Get yourself some flour because we're going to start rolling this bad boy in a minute. Just going to chuck a little bit of flour into that just to just we're being a bit slimy. That's good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Right. Now you've got to knead it. Very important. Get it onto your board. So your hands like this, sort of pushing through. Pushing through with this part of the thumb. Very important. Um, remember when I was a commie chef when I left school? Um, used to have to knead a lot of pastry amongst the other rubbish jobs. I remember, you know, starting off really giving it some and smashing the thing around. And the head chef sort of came over to me and said, stop, stop doing that. You need to treat it like you would treat a woman's breast. You just caress it. So yeah, that um, bit of advice has kind of stuck with me, weirdly. French guy, lovely guy he was. Great chef. Right, so I'm gonna caress this some more. It's getting there now, it feels really nice actually. Like a bosom, some could say. Okay, so that's nice and soft, I'm liking that. Very nice, consistent, very nice pastry that is actually. Nice feel to it. There he is. Beautiful. Right, so then you just need to leave that to rest now. That's why I've done that first. It's good to leave it to rest for a good, at least half an hour. We've battered him around a bit. We, want, we don't want him to split when we roll him, so best thing to do is stick it back in your bowl and just stick a towel over it or something stop it drying up we put cling film right so that's the pastry done so that's the pastry set aside now we're going to make the cranberry sauce this is a Something I've adapted over the years. Um, I would strongly suggest making your own. Don't buy that jar rubbish. It's really easy. You just need fresh cranberries, of course. Um, you can buy frozen ones. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I think they're a bit watery and yeah, I mean, you can't beat fresh ones. Most good green grocers sell them these days. Um, I think even your scummy Tesco's and that do it as well. So yeah, you need that, you need some sugar. And you need a little bit of like, uh, you need a little bit of liquor really. It's probably the best word for it. Um, you can use port, brandy. I'm actually going to use bourbon because it's my favourite drink. So let's crack on with it. Right, so we've got the cranberries on. We'll get these on a quite a high heat. Mediums are high. Um, a little bit of olive oil has gone in there just to stop the bad boys sticking. Um, yeah, we just want to soften them up really. So what we're gonna do, once they've started to soften up, I'm gonna stick a bit of bourbon in there. Then what we want to do is reduce that bourbon down into the cranberries before we add some sugar, which is then going to caramelize and create our sauce. Oh, it smells absolutely wonderful. Starting to get the cranberries breaking up now. So what we're now going to do is go in with some sugar. I've got light brown sugar use caster if you want I would probably say I'm gonna go two two tablespoons with this oh yeah 
a little touch of salt. If you've got any cinnamon, that's good as well, but I don't know if you've got any. I'm going to stick just a pinch of five spice. Just give it a little Christmas ting. Right. So it's starting to jam up now. Lovely. Turn it down. Just got to wait. Crush all these. Oh, it's popping away. That's pretty good. I'm just going to add a touch of water, I think, just to... splash of water yeah it's really starting to jam up nicely now I'm just going to take it off the heat a minute because I just just want to try it just to make sure that it's sweet enough and yeah taste that I'm trying to be very careful when you do this because this is red hot it's jam basically it's just a tad bit sugar I think a bit more sugar So yeah, you probably want two and a half tablespoons for that amount of cranberries. Still a little bit of tart for my liking. It's gonna stick in a little bit of honey, I think. Honey's a great thing to use in this as a sweetener. that up again mm. that's a sort of that's what we're talking about all right let's turn that off And there it is, beautiful. So we're just gonna leave that to cool down. Great, so the cranberry sauce is done. Now we're gonna get involved with making the sausage meat. So what you need for this is four decent sized sausages from your butcher. Um, up to you which sort you want. I've gone for two Lincolnshire and two pork. You also need a couple of shallots and the cranberry sauce, I think that's about it. Bit of mustard, seasoning. So, start with the shallots. Let's have a board, stick something under it. What have we got here? Here they are. Let me go for free. Get your knife. So we are going to chop these finely. So we're going to do it the same way as I showed you how to do onions. Uh, that one, I'm going to show you another way as well. New way that I've been doing them, the opposite. So you cut off the root and you leave this top bit. Let's do that again. So cut off the root, leave that top bit. Now, like I showed you before, we're going to get in there. We're going to cut right down to that. We don't need to slice across like that because we can go in really small like this. Lovely. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Look, I mean, this one has got the root on it. 
you just exactly the same technique. I think the other way, the new way that I'm doing it, actually holds it together a little bit better. But this way is still fine. So I want that nice and really small we want this. Bit of a shake on this thing, isn't there? <laughs> Sorry if you're picking that up on the mics. Get all this done. So we got these finely chopped, so now we're gonna cook them very slowly. Get those in there, lovely. So, we just wanna soften them. We really don't wanna brown these. I just, just need to, to make that clear. We just want to bring out a little bit of the flavor. Could add some garlic, I'm not gonna. Don't like garlic in the old sausage rolls. Right, so let's do the sausage meat while that's cooking. Got me lovely sausages from Keats. Best butcher in Dorset by a country mile. Paul Keaton, legend. Right, so we've got ourselves a bowl. So what we want to do is just trim off the top. And then, oh, squeeze out. I don't want that skin in there. Squeeze out the sausages. It can be messy, this. It's all part of the fun. I want to waste too much of that. So, again, we just take the top off. Get that lovely sausage meat out, out of the foreskin, whatever you call it. I mean, you could use sausage meat for this, to be fair. Um, I just like to use sausages. So I think you can obviously choose different ones. You've got your Cumberlands and your Lincolnshires. I've got two Lincolns and two Porks. But yeah, I mean, if you've got some nice sausage meat, just use that. Okay. Just gonna give the old shallots a stir. Right, so we've got our sausages in there. Now we're gonna get some pepper. A little pepper. I don't need too much because I've got Lincolnshire, which has got the pepper in it. Then I'm going to add these softened onions. Then we're going to go in with a good splodge, a couple of tablespoons of your cranberry. Lovely. Look at that. A little bit of salt. I've got a bit of parsley, so I'm going to put that in. Need to use it up. If you've got any sage or anything like that, it's nice in there as well. Just going to chop this parsley up. Mix all this up into a mixture. Don't be afraid of this. Got to get your hands in there. Quite a bit of cranberry in there actually. Probably just do one tablespoon. <laughs> That'll be fine. Got 
a little bit carried away with the old cranberry, but that's nice. There we go, look at that, that's a beauty. Right, so we're gonna get our pastry. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to greaseproof paper. Give him a little dusting. I can move it around nicely on this as well. I think that'll probably do us, you know. Get our mixture out. Position it in there. We want a nice fat thing. That's what we want. Like a turd. And basically then, just fold this into it. And get a nice bit pastry then at the bottom. Absolutely lovely. Get ourselves a tray. Get them in the tray. Okay. Now what we want to do is egg wash it. So you get yourself an egg yolk. You only want the yolk, you don't really want the white for this. Just give him a nice glaze. All the way over. Give him some little breathe holes. And we're ready to go in the oven. Probably about Half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. See yeah, how we get us on. We can, we can, you can tell when it's cooked. Pastries, you can, you know, you're not stupid. Right, great. Right, let's get these bad boys out. It's been about 40 minutes, so I was wrong on those timings I gave you. So yeah, give it, I mean, you could move it up a bit higher. I had mine quite low. I did move it up halfway through. Um, but I think it's ready now. Let's have a look. Looks good. Looks very good. So a good way to test this, stick your knife down the middle. Classic looks in my kitchen. Right, so a good way to test this, stick your knife down the middle. If it's hot on your tongue, on your lip, it's cooked. Just give that a little wipe. So, right. So I've got him off the tray. Now we just let, need to let him cool down a bit because he's breaking up a little bit. So, just gonna put him on a cooling rack. Right, so he's just been cooling down 10 minutes. Probably do a little bit longer, but I just wanna finish this off and show you what I like to do with it, I'll just slice it down and have a nice slice of it. He has crumbled a lot more than he usually does, I must admit, but it doesn't really matter too much. I've just sliced a bit off. Look at that. Lovely. You've got all those beautiful flavours in there. You've got those cranberries, 
Ah, oh, that pastry is, I mean, it's crumbly. Don't get me wrong. But it is absolutely divine. Well, thank you for, thank you for watching. Um, subscribe, don't forget to subscribe. Check out my Instagrams. I've got a new website now as well, coremarketproductions.com. Please go and check that out. This is the new home of the Wixie Boy Kitchen. And yeah, join me again. I've got two more to do before Christmas, so probably see another one drop next week. Peace out. Keep good, keep people, keep good.